My name is Michael Shoemate and welcome to Logo Design Theory. How branding design really works. We laid the foundation of legibility and contrast in our last video. Now let's see some principles on how it applies to color. Color principle number one. Every color has a value. Though we may not have thought about it before, every color has a value. By definition, only white can be 0% and only black can be 100%. Merely choosing colors for type that are very different in hue from their background is no guarantee of legibility. It still comes down to value. In practice, a designer needs to ignore hue and saturation when selecting color for type over colored backgrounds. Instead, designers need to learn to consider the inherent value of each color to ensure there is sufficient contrast for good legibility. Contrast mistakes like this are even worse when the results have to be viewed at a distance or at small sizes, as you can plainly see here. Special note, given that excellent contrast is 60% differential or greater, it is impossible to achieve excellent contrast over a 50% background. In the book cover shown here, we can see that the red type on the blue background is difficult to read in the title and nearly impossible to read in smaller type. If you browse any online bookseller, you'll see how often book cover designers make this mistake and not just the self-published ones either. Again, this contrast issue is made worse the smaller the type is. Now the vast majority of books are bought online. The first time most book covers will be seen is not in the bookstore but online, and they will only be about 150 to 200 pixels high, making this a very modern problem. Color principle number two, avoid the dreaded V words, vanishing and vibration. If type and its background are close in both hue and in value, the type will vanish, as with the magenta type on a red background. If type and its background are close in value and very different in hue, vibration will occur. While this is more legible than vanishing, it makes up for it by being more irritating and should be avoided at all costs. As with other issues, these are made worse when type is small or when viewed at a distance, such as in signage. Color principle number three. Busy backgrounds always injure legibility. Type frequently needs to be placed over a photo or other imagery. If the background for type is busy, the type may be impossible to read. Busy backgrounds are defined as those with both light and dark elements. No color of type would be easily read over a busy background. Remember, the question is not can the viewer eventually puzzle out what is written, but rather is this design helping or hurting communication. In case you couldn't read it, the type here says, what color text can be easily read over a busy background? The answer is, there is no color that can be easily read over a busy background. Don't use them. This doesn't mean that a background must always be a flat color. Just make sure that the values are either all light or all dark. Only then will surprinting or reversing type have a chance. However, if parts of the texture are in the middle value range, it may be impossible to achieve excellent contrast, 60% difference or greater. Question, what if the photo doesn't have either all dark texture or all light? Answer, time for an assist from Photoshop. Designers can plan when they're choosing images where the type can go and where it can't. Note here, that the type works really well over the blue water, but absolutely cannot be read over the very varied background of the cityscape. Color principle number five, avoid widely varying backgrounds and such as over a gradient that has light, mid, and dark portions in its progression. Again, the answer is nothing will work well some parts will survive, maybe even have quite good contrast, but others will be illegible or at least compromised. Don't do it. Does that mean that all gradients are useless? No. 
But if text is to go over them, then limit the background gradient values to the light third or the dark third of the value scale and make the type the other value extreme. For instance, make the background gradient values from about 66% to 100% with light type over, or else make the background gradient from about 35% to lighter with dark type over. Remember to avoid colors with equivalent values near 50%. It is impossible to get 60% away from a background with a value of 50%. Color principle number six. Close enough is not close enough. In baseball, you get three strikes before you're out. But in graphic design, there are times when two strikes are all you get, sometimes only one. Consider outside signage, for instance. It may have to fight to be seen amidst all sorts of visual distraction. It will be viewed in variable lighting conditions. The viewer may be moving fast and only have a split second to absorb the message. I would call outside signage a one-strike situation. What are other factors that reduce the amount of leeway a designer has? Things like decorative backgrounds. Foolish embellishments like drop shadows can cut down on legibility. A challenging font or an unfamiliar or difficult name in an identity can certainly up the ante. Corporate identity is one area where you can strike out with even one bad decision, especially when it involves poor contrast. Anyone who has ever printed from a computer knows that what you see on the screen is often different from what appears on the printed page. Colors can appear too dark, too light, too warm, too cool, too washed out, compared with their appearance on the computer monitor. Too often, beginners think that the contrast in their design as viewed on the computer monitor is close enough. That approach is courting design disaster. Each row of these digital designs were printed on three different printers of the same brand. Each design had one or more colors that did not have enough contrast built in. As a result, there are parts of each design where legibility suffers. You always have to consider that printing or the viewer's monitor will eat up some of your good enough margin. Even what is designed for the web ends up looking different depending on what monitor or tablet or phone screen it is viewed on. You can't afford to play anywhere near the edge of legibility. Corporate identity design must be legible in every conceivable output and when viewed in every possible circumstance. Any wise designer will always aim for excellent contrast, which is a minimum 60% contrast differential or greater. Don't fudge on these parameters. These principles are important in all areas of graphic design, but are absolutely imperative in corporate identity design. For more information, go to Logo Design Theory. If you found this useful, be sure to like this video, subscribe, and share it with anyone who needs to know more about branding design.